Park niggas know me. Curb on, little homie. All days, all days. Yeah. Been a road, been a road. My man Malone, Curtis what's Malone. Up, man? What's up, man? DC How you doing, Salt, man? man. How you Wait doing, to get man? you on here, man. God, I was real excited about getting you, man. You're DC legend, man. You stay under the radar. You don't make a lot of noise, man. You don't come on joints like this, man. I want to dap you again, man. Thank you for coming through Sammy, man. man I appreciate Changing you for having yours, me, man. brother. Yeah, for man. sure, so man. We're yeah. going to just get straight to the to the cut, man. Okay. Like, man, where you from, man? Tell us where you from a little bit about your uh, childhood. Well, you know, originally from Uptown, you okay. know, we moved out Maryland, man, out to Palmer Park, Maryland. So grew up pretty much out Landover, out in that area, man. And, you know, uh, was a half decent basketball player, man, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mother and father, little middle class home, you know, mm -hmm. uh, three sisters, mm -hmm. a few other sisters and brothers also, you know, from other, from another uh, lady. But for the most part, man, just came up out Landover, man. Right, right. And, and, and Landover, you like Palmer Park specifically, right? Yeah, yeah, so, so yeah. That's that's almost like this. Shit. That's like a that's like a Ward Nine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was, it's can, different. Yeah, it's yeah, a little yeah, different, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. got the uh, 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 historical boxing gym, Sugar Ray Leonard. Oh, yes. it's Palmer Park back then, right? It's oh. Palmer Park, but it's you know it's the Sugar Ray Leonard Gymnasium. gymnasium right, they right. named the gym after him once he right, made it. Right, you know, right, but at right. first everything started. At the rec center. All right. And y'all had a lot of good fights. I know I know you had Sugar Ray Leonard, you had Jamal Hinton. Uh anybody else you can think of? I know Dirk Holmes. Uh well we had uh well Jamal, like right. you said, we Andrew Maynard. Right. Um What's the uh, last game? Son in a fighting too. He Sonny fought. Speed, Eugene yeah. Speed. Yeah, what's the, what's the last game? fun? It's Rivers. All the Rivers All brothers. The Rivers they had a bunch there. of those, yeah. Right. Little Kevin Rivers it was the baby, was uh Kevin Rivers. Who was a pretty good fighter back in his day. Right. We had a lot of, I thought, guys that had a chance, mm -hmm. but just didn't make it, man. You know right. how the streets was right. back then, man. Right. And the streets was first. Right. And Ray Leonard was the one who didn't let the streets get him. He yeah. took the advantage of it. Because uh, back then, they was big on Dirk Holmes. They thought he was going to be the yeah. one. He yeah. ended up catching like a robbery or something. Yeah. With a cat. You ever get you ever hit him? You ever get a chance yeah, to see him? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Captain Rivers uh, beat Dirk Holmes. They robbed him. <clears throat> but well, everybody still talk about that to he this day. Huh? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Great fight. Okay, okay. God damn. So they they also say you played a little basketball, man. Uh, 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 high school, junior high. Yeah, play? I played. I played throughout high school, man. Uh, junior high too, from uptown mm. on the playgrounds to mm. you know went to Parkdale High School out out Maryland, out Riverdale, mm -hmm. and uh, from there went to a couple of school colleges. Played a little bit of college basketball, but mm -hmm. again. You know, I uh, turned left when yeah. I should have kept driving straight. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got distracted. Uh, yeah, you got distracted. Got there. Who, who, some dudes you play against, like notable guys you play against in high school? Uh, well, in our area, the, the players were like, uh, you know, Clint Venable, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Sumner, mm -hmm. Keith Williams, mm -hmm. uh, Crossland had a mob, Mike Tate, and them. Ooh, uh, that's a bucket. Uh, Henry Hall played with me at Parkdale. Right, right. Uh, so, I mean, but, you know, even playing against, you know, guys like we played Spengon, mm -hmm. we played Coolidge, Dirk Davis, and mm -hmm. them. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we came over, uh, Spengon came out there and beat us. We mm -hmm. played at Spengon one year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I got a chance to play against all those guys all the time. And, you know, we used to play at the Rex and over Columbia Park right, yeah, where you got to so taste a little bit. taste of everybody right, yeah. that came through there, you know, from Earl Moore to right. Sherman to That's Smitty. Name. Earl name. Oh, yeah. Why Earl, Earl name don't uh, be mentioned, man? Well, it should be. A lot of people probably don't really know. But Earl name. was Earl was special, man. Right, yeah. That's a name, man. Earl talk a lot, man. I always tell him, I say, man, you, you like a solid sass. They don't bring your name. They ain't hip to you, man. Oh, no, he man. was a really good player. I went to watch him out, even out with George Mason. Right, you right. Know, Earl was, oh, yeah, Earl yeah, was yeah. a problem, yeah, man. Yeah, big fish yeah. in them out there. Yeah, what's the name? So, I, you say you play uh, uh, for my man Henry Hall, man. I got I to gotta put you on the spot because this is a big debate and everybody want to know, man, you know, Henry Hall or Kirk Smith, man. Uh, who you... Henry Hall and Kirk Smith, man. Well, you, you know, I, I mean, I, that's, that's a tough one. He showing up put me on the spot. But uh, I tell you what, man, I, I had a chance to play against both of them. Uh, but I think if I'm, I'm going to have to give this because I feel like if Henry Hall put in the work like Kirk, mm -hmm. you know, I think Kirk later on, just became better and better and better. Yeah, you know, yeah. Henry kind of stopped playing. Right, right, you didn't right. see much of Henry, but right. if Henry would have 
kept going, I would have to take Henry Hall, though. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. and it's right. official bone. It's official. I said it, the right. other bone. Yeah, okay. When okay, he okay. watched us. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. The knockoff bone, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I come from jail, they call him Kirk Bowl. Yeah, I said, yeah. start calling you Kirk Bowl, man. Yeah. You Kirk Smith, yeah. man. You yeah. spinny little brother, That's man. Right. Little Smith, right. 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 bone, right. bone, and herbal flesh. Talking about what it is, yeah. Kirk. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. That, that, but that'll be, man. That's a, that's two hell of a two hell of a dude, man. It was, man. I like I said, man. Playing with Henry every day, you know, boom, man. I started coaching, uh, giving back and helping kids, man, mm -hmm. and played against some of the best players that you see now from mm -hmm. LeBron, and we done seen them all, mm -hmm. man. And I would ha I would put Henry. Up in that category with Kobe, them from a high school perspective. Damn, that's, that's how strong. good he was. Yeah, that's I strong. thought, I that's thought strong. he, you know, and like I said, I've seen them all, right. but I don't know if I've seen what I've seen every day in practice right. and in games, right. you know, on a high school level, right. what this boy was doing. Because he was doing that Steph Curry shit back then. He was oh, pulling yeah. up from the, yeah. the locker room. He man. step over half and pull it up. Yeah, right, that's crazy. So uh, you seen a lot of ball players, man. You coaching, playing, you seen them. So who you who would you say the best person best talent you've seen that didn't make it to the college level and also the best talent you see that didn't make it to the pro level whether it been more than one or a couple or who you who would you right off your head I know you might miss somebody but off of your off of your head mm. first college they didn't go to college it was high school well you know like I, I always I always to not make it mm -hmm. to me uh one of the, like I said, Henry Hall was mm -hmm. one. Okay. I really thought Henry was the next Tim Hardaway. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, what Kurt did, I mean, he was undersized, but Kurt was a different animal who I didn't, who didn't make it, you right. know, and right. played for some money. But I thought Kurt was a guy that could have played in the league and should have made it, right. you know. But it's so many man that right. we didn't see right. here that that you know so. Most of the ones I seen that was really good. Most of them made it. They wore a uniform in right. the NBA, but for the most part, uh, you know, the guy. I think I think our guys here in the city, man, there was a lot of guys that could have made it. Man. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them streets, man. Them streets, man. They undefeated, man. It, yeah, it, it don't lose. They, they undefeated, yeah. man. Stacy yeah. Robinson, man. Yeah. Uh, 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 come one come to mind too, man. And um, and what about you? You uh. I'm gonna say it now. Probably you probably heard this in a while, man. Uh, Lafonte Johnson, Baltimore. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, um, um, Shorty, man, was the goods, man. And Shorty, yeah. and Shorty, one of the few. And I want to get your perspective on it, but he one of the few dudes I can think of. I always give a trivia, a trivia that I say who was the only player in the uh, D.C. Baltimore area that won the championship in high school, public, private, and prep. He won wow. three joints. I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah. And you know. Yeah. Lafonte. You know. Tay played with us. Right. You know. Um, but you know, something about Baltimore, man. They was known to create these little special, the right, small right, special right, players. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. And when uh, Coach Goody, you know, brought him up here to us, right. man. Like I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. this little guy's the truth. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we had some pretty good players. But he came right up here, man, fit in, did his thing. But he was special, man. Right, yeah. Showed it was special. Yeah, Coach Keith Goody, man, he, look, he, he was my secret, one of my secret GMs outside of you. Mm -hmm. You, Coach Goody, uh, um, and probably, uh, I don't forget, but somewhere I had a little secret, man, that for that herb, for that farm. Uh -huh, it uh -huh. was like, man, they should say, man, Bone, who you flying there? You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. What time you say, man, Nolan about to come down, and Nolan come down, man, Nolan come down, I got Nolan. Beasley, Dante Green, <laughs> boom, they put a show on. I was like, stay in like, man, who these young motherfuckers, man? These niggas flying, don't go yeah. away. Then one day they come back. Isaiah, uh, what's my swan? Swan. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Lord Shorty, uh, Chris Wright. We were so deep on the back. Like, damn, we had about nine of these little jokes. We yeah. couldn't even get them all out there, right? Yeah. And all yeah. the little teens, uh, rasses, all the teens, they still in my players. They motherfucker with the head. Man, you supposed to be in the game, man. You, you on the bench and all that, right? Yeah, but I yeah, said, man, y'all yeah. have to fly the man, man, for me, man. I definitely appreciate that, man. And so what you, what you think about Keith Goody, man? Like, he been around... The basketball world so long. I mean, he done coached the likes of Melo and Mentor Sanger and 
Marco, you name you name he done been around them all. What why you think a guy like him can't get the keys to his own college program? Well, you know, I you know, a guy me and me and goods, you know, we talk all the time, man. And, mm. and just, you know, the same guy smile and 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 shake your hand every day, be mm. the same guys won't hire you. Mm -hmm. It be the same guys that call you looking for a player, need mm -hmm. your evaluation. Mm -hmm. Want you to give him a player too. Mm -hmm. Give me a name. How good is this kid? One, you know, one mm -hmm. good expertise. But a lot of guys just won't take a chance, mm -hmm. man. And I always say, you know, we had this conversation early. Most of the time it's us, man. It won't yeah. help each other. Right, us is us. Us is yeah. us, huh, yes. man? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah. So you end up starting DC Salt, man. One of the most prestigious AU programs in the history of the country, man. First of all, two questions. How did you start? What made you start it? And what made you decide on that name, DC Assault? Well, we we uh, we were Team Assault at first. But what ended up happening, man, is that I started coaching under the uh, PG Jaguars. Okay. And uh, Mike, me and Mike Sumner. Um, so what happened was when we – I used to coach over at Columbia Park Rec. And mm -hmm. me and Troy, we were always was really close, like brothers. Mm -hmm. So I went over to Columbia Park to, to coach. And from there – me and Troy was like, let's start our own team. Mm -hmm. You know, we were with the Jaguars. Mm -hmm. So we put together our roster and we started this team. We first, man, the crazy part is our name was, uh, we were Team Reebok one year, Planet Reebok. You remember oh, the yeah? commercial with yeah. Spike Lee? Right, yeah. With Sam Cassell gave us all the Reebok stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? Sam, shout Sam, out to Sam. Yeah, oh, he's so, coming on. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So Sam gave us Reebok stuff because of Mike Brown. Right, okay. You know, Mike was representing Sam now. Okay. So then this a new shoe company come out, and it's called the Ariel Assault mm -hmm. Shoe. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so from there, we get all these shoes. They wanted Walt Williams to wear their shoe, and Mike Lynn Elmore them represent Walt. Right, right. So Mike get the shoe right. to all the kids. So we had to change the name from Planet Reebok to Team Assault because of the shoe that came out. The shoe, conflict of interest. Yeah. So okay. the shoe, the shoe never did anything. Right. But from there, and when we signed with Adidas, mm -hmm. they wanted to name it to put where we're from. So we named it DC Assault. Okay. 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 Yeah. Cool. Cool. And Mike Brown, you said now did Mike another basketball of mine too. Uh, so, so your initial start off, guys, was you, um, uh, Troy, Troy. Weaver. For people who don't know Troy, we were a GM of Detroit Pistons. Yes. Uh, and was it Mike Summit or, or Mike Summit? Okay. Yes, Mike. Summit. And then Mike Brown came on. Okay. And from there, Troy born on Damon Hand, okay. okay. who run the program DC Premier now. Okay. So um, Troy and Damon were friends, and uh -huh. Troy uh, Damon knew Mike. Right. And then me and Moose, me and Mike Sumner was okay. best friends. So Mike was with me okay. coaching. So you look. So I'm looking at you, and I'm, look, I'm looking at Troy. I mean, and and, and I know Dan. You said Damon and, and Mike Sumner, but and Mike Brown. Those 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 least. Well, Mike Sumner too. I don't know a lot about Damon's personality, but those strong personalities, strong basketball opinions. Like, what was some of them nights nice, like in the in the war room when y'all had to make a decision on certain kids? They want was gonna play sixteen or seventeen when y'all was in the beginning, but when you only could take twelve or fifteen, man, how was those look like? Those well, little, what's the name? <clears throat> you know, Mike is very sharp. Right. You know, Troy was the X and O's guy. Right, right, right. You know, and then Troy have a, you know, Troy have this demeanor that, you know, he's gonna want what he want to. Right. And me, I'm just I'm the go getter. Right. You know, if we right. need a kid that's hard, I'm going over Southeast, pick up a young right. Right. You know, right. I'm going to go get the talent. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And for me, Brown and uh, Troy would, would always bump heads. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think Troy would win right. most yeah. of those nights. Right. And me right. and Moose and Damon, we just fell back. But I would go and get the kids from right. all over. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I be on Troy. Man, I mean, Troy have a lot of battles. And also, Mike, man, I be... I don't want to, you know, they GM, so I don't want to put their basketball opinion publicly, right? Uh -huh. But I had to prove them wrong uh -huh. on a lot of, on a lot of uh -huh. stuff, right? Yeah. You know, they, they, that throwback shit, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a, that, that's a concept for another day, man. So you just say Troy was a coach. He always an X and O dude. But did you see Troy Weaver becoming a GM of a NBA basketball pro, uh, program? Yes. Did you see that? Yes, I did. I did. I seen it. Uh, Troy is a gym rat. Mm-hmm. He was a guy that got the kids better. Mm -hmm. He trained all those guys. Um, and like I said, he was an X and O guy. Mm -hmm. And he was a leader. Mm -hmm. You know, I always 
envision him going as far as, you know, basketball can take him mm -hmm. because he was always a special person, man. And he walked a straight line, man, mm -hmm. and did it the right way. Did the right so way. So I always knew he was going to be special mm -hmm. in the business. It'd be, it'd be good sometimes to see the good guys <laughs> went, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you're right, he jumped over all the hurdles, didn't get caught up in the streets and all yeah. that, man, and it paid off. Uh, and I and I remember I used to be talking to a couple of guys that was overseas. They be like, man, Trey Band one. He was like, man, Troy's at my game. I'm like, man, what country you in? Like he he was all over. He just a, a school watching the game. Used to chase them games too. You be in junior high games and yeah, recreations, yeah. church leagues. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah he was all yeah. over. Ain't Trey. nobody gonna outwork me man, yeah, when it yeah, comes yeah. to getting the players. So. And I was, I was gonna ask you later yeah. on that line. Do you know yeah. think anybody in the business would use your heyday without working? No, 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 no. I I don't. Uh, and most of the guys know of anybody watching. Right. You know, they'll tell me, you know, they see me come to the gym and it's like, oh, hey, shit. Yeah, yeah. Here he come. Right, right. You right, know, right, and, right, and, and, yeah. and the guy had a player that was good enough. Oh, shit. Here he come. Yeah, you know? yeah. and, but if I was going to go after something, I was going to get it. Man. Right. Okay. Yeah. So when y'all put that DC Assault together or the first team together, do you remember that first team? Do you remember that? Starting five or at least four, six. Or seven I don't. Years, I don't remember it, but we had some players, man. Like I started out, you know, I had eighth and ninth graders playing seventeen. Now I had Delonte Hill, I had Frank McQueen, Frank McQueen, uh, Willie, little Willie, uh, Willie, uh, damn, Willie is from out of Palmer Park, but Willie played on that McNamara team with Delonte. Okay. Um, Damn, how could I forget Willie's name? But anyway, Lil, Lil Willie, um, Damon Pearson, uh, kid Kevin Johnson went to Dunbar, played at Ohio State in football. Oh, yeah. um, you had eighth graders and ninth graders. Yeah, when I took under. Delonte, Delonte was 13 when I first got Delonte Hill. Mm -hmm. And he played on my 15 under at the rec. Mm -hmm. So when we registered AAU, Delonte was literally going to ninth grade and following summer. He played 17 under and 19 under. Mm. It wasn't no, I didn't, these guys play their guys at the age group. Now, right. so many guys repeating and the game has changed so right. much, man. You might have a guy 18 playing and 15 under, mm -hmm. 16 under because of the grade. Mm -hmm. We always played our kids mm -hmm. up. Damn, that's strong because you said 17. Yo, you talking about 12 graders. Yeah. 11, 11 going to 12 or 12. Yeah. And you yeah, sure. okay, yeah. yo, they, yeah. they, they had the fire in them. Really. Yeah, and we had some battles. Yeah, you oh, know, yeah. playing against guys like uh, Rand. Uh, what's the guy? What's, no, what's the kid went to uh, Michigan? Um, uh, um, uh, the big boy or the. No, the guard. He scored a lot. Oh, Ramir, Ramir Robinson? No, he's um, from here. Oh, from here? Oh, Bullock. Bullock. Oh, we, man. Bullock, Bullock oh, Children's, them, they had they had some mobs, man, but we played against them, man. We played Lou Lou Wilson and, and Executive 3 had a 19 under team. I mean, we was getting the championships in, the, in all the tournaments here local oh, yeah. playing against them guys, you know. So, y'all so were on the road. They was already battle tested right? oh, yeah, from, they from the beltway. Yeah, and you had to be tough to play with us. You right. couldn't. You couldn't put the uniform on if you ain't had no heart. Right, yeah, and I'm gonna get to that too down the line too, right there. <laughs> uh -huh. What's the name, man? I remember I got a call from my man Brian Waller, man. He was coaching Parkdale at the time. Yes. Um, he say, man, he say, bone. He played with my my um, team at Urban Collision, CB uh -huh. Entertainment. Mm -hmm. So he called. He say, man, what you doing, man? Would you come and check my practice out? I ride out there, man. The practice already started. I'm in the I'm in the stands. I'm looking at the stand. I see this Linky kid, man, shooting that thing from all over the place. Mid range, all the glass, footwork, run. He wasn't missing in the drills. He wasn't missing in the scrimmages. He didn't miss. So I say, man, who the hell is this dude at the practice? So he said, man, this the dude. See them tennis shoes we got on. This is why we got him because this dude, man, Demar Johnson, man. So, when did you first encounter Demar Johnson? That was my first encounter with him. My first, first encounter, man. He was in the ninth grade at Bladensburg. Okay. He didn't have no grades. Okay. His grandfather. And his family lived over by, by Watts Playground. Okay. So he was on the playground. Kurt Smith called me one night and mm -hmm. was like, Kurt, you got to get past here. Yeah. So I go past there, see the kid. And I'm like, who, who are you? Right. Like, Where you come from? Yeah. So I said, man, you want to play AU? Right. He was like, I don't care. I'm like, all right, well, who I need to talk to? Right, right. So he, he was like my cousin. So he called his cousin. Rest in peace, Terry. That's DJ Cousin passed away last year. And I'm on the phone. I say, how you doing? This is uh, Curtis. He said, Curtis, this Terry, man. We've been trying to put DJ with you. 
Oh, Terry man. went to Parkdale with us. So from that day on, he Damn. was he was with us. So we transferred him over to Parkdale oh, with okay. Ice now, okay. you know, to try okay. to get him straight. Okay. And uh, of course, that didn't work. I mean, it worked out as as best it, it you know it could. Mm. Um, and Ice was the perfect person for man, him. You perfect know? human being. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Ice, you know, and dealt with DJ man, and it just, you know, he started playing AAU. He got around them other players, and one thing about kids they get around each other and when they get close they they put together whatever story they want to put together to play with each other mm -hmm. you know man mm -hmm. i want to transfer i want to go over there i want to go over there you know mm -hmm. so that started getting in his head a little bit and dj was you know his 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 he, they wanted him kind of get away from the neighborhood and stuff he was also in mm -hmm. so we ended up moving him to another school but ice you know again if if I could have left him there just for ice, he would have been there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, cause, because he was one of the, DJ's one of the first youngest, and he young, way younger than me, always. But I haven't heard a dude from the earlier saying straight to the lead since JoJo Hunter and mm -hmm. and Stacy Roberts and all them guys. Man, I was just like, man, did you ever think back and say he could have jumped that Cincinnati and went right there? Or you yeah, think? he well he could he could have left straight out of high school. And mm -hmm. what happened was we. Uh, at the time, Sonny Vaccaro was mm -hmm. was advising us on okay. everything, mm -hmm. and that year Sonny had a few guys who are GMs and stuff and mm -hmm. scouts, and he would get his evaluations from them, mm -hmm. and they had sort of projected that DJ probably would go anywhere from seventeen to twenty five okay. if he came straight out. Right. So Sonny was like, "Well, why not year? send him one year to okay. college?" Okay. So it came down to you know, mm -hmm. uh, you. Uh, UConn, uh, Troy was at Pitt, mm -hmm. and then Cincinnati, and so he chose Cincinnati, okay. and and you know he was there for eight months, nine yeah, I mean, months. Kenya Mark was a man, full grown yes, man, yeah. full grown man, yeah. yeah. Kenya Mark, yeah. Yeah, that was a good pick. So, so if the model hurt his neck in the Cox in Atlanta, what you think? What you think we looking at? Do you think mm, his career would look like? I, I think I think he'd have had a a solid, really solid career. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, Probably, and if he worked hard enough, I think he could have had a career similar to like a Joe Johnson because okay. he was that caliber of player. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the crazy part is if he played today, he'd be one of the best players because all they do is shoot threes right, yeah. now. You right. know what I mean? Right. Everybody can right. shoot a three. Right. You're six, nine, you're away from the basket, you know. Right. But I think he'd have had a, a really strong, you know, really good career. I mean, like I said, Keith Bogans played in the league about 13 years, I think. That's my man right there, you Keith know? Bogans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, hard hat on, yeah. You know. So I know you had a lot of teams, so this might be a tough question, but who's you? if you had to think about who you think was your most talented team? I would, I mean, I, I, I would have to go with DJ them team. Okay, yeah. Okay. Because, you know, with... Kevin Lyle, no. right. Well, Kevin Kevin was the year before DJ. Okay. Uh, but it was DJ Keith Bogans, Sheik, Kadoza? Dirk, yeah, Dirk, okay. Dirk, uh, Payne, Payne. Okay. Uh, Kevin Lyle was on that. Yeah, that's the year Kevin seen. Yeah, but those kids were younger than Kevin. Okay, but they played up. Okay, um, Val Brown, oh, my man, um, Val Brown, and they were just so tough, man. Right. You know, right. like, right. and right. then the year before, the year after that, we had, you know, any them years with Demar. Was Bogans, Demar, Lafonte, Al Miller, Brian Chase, Cliff Hawkins, uh, and the young guys was like Bernard, James White. They were the young guys, but that team uh, we had the big boy from Dunbar, Baltimore, um, that came up with Tay though. The big he was the center for them. Merle? Yeah, Dunbar, Baltimore. Elliot. No, no Elliot. Uh, uh, mm. I forgot his name, but he was a really good player. So right. that mob, I think, was the most talented. Right. Man. I mean, you're talking about Kentucky, so, Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech, Eric Branham, right. you know, uh, yeah. DJ, Kentucky, uh, Bogans, you got Cliff Hawkins, mm -hmm. Kentucky. You Eric know. Branham was never named, and people don't be mentioning, man, yeah. fly on the radar, man. Yeah. Yeah. We had a D.C. Baltimore game at Baltimore Civic Center. This was this one, um, uh, my man from Maryland, um, the shooter boys. Elliot. No, it's the shooter from the uh, went to the Wizards. Dixon. Dixon. Okay. Was fine back then, man. So he, he and the friend, the first whole first quarter, going to the second quarter, destroying it. 
And the whole time, Irk ran him on the team, keep on saying, man, let me get him. Let, let me check him. He was just frying, right? So Fat Wheel, rest in peace, was coaching. <laughs> and um, I said, man, let him get him, man. Let him play. He wanted it. Shit. Yeah. Nobody else ain't doing nothing. When I tell you, Slim yeah, locked yeah, it up. Yeah, Slim is yeah, coming back to the, yeah. to the, to the, to the huddle. So I'm like, he scored another basket. I'm walking home. Yeah. I was like, Lord, man, he sat yeah, down, strapped him yeah. 94. I was like, yeah, shorty yeah. tough as nails, yeah, man. Having them, man, like I said, him, Val Brown, Cliff Hawkins, man. I mean, then Sheik. Yeah. I mean, couldn't nobody, and we played full court man to man, Slim. We didn't, wasn't no, no zone. I probably got five point guards, all of them almost high majors. Well, yeah. So it ain't enough minutes for all of them unless yeah. we do play unless full you court. Play, you let them go. You know, so right. everybody pick up one. And when you're going to play hard and you rest for a little bit, we're going to sub. You know, we might go three or four small ones on the court, but ain't nobody getting the ball up. Right, right. So, so, so you take that team. You just said that you that Tyler team, and you lock him in the gym, and you take that Beasley and Nolan team, mm -hmm. and you lock him in the gym. You putting all we we working miracles now. We put them in the, all the same timeline, right? The best out of seven. It's gonna go seven. I can tell it's you going that. Seven. It will go okay, seven. It's going seven. Uh, uh, I mean, that team was tough. I just. The only reason I liked that older team was mm -hmm. because they were a different type of tough man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Nolan and them, Mike and them were, you know, they were team was good. Now on days we had Navarro, right, yeah. we was tough like yeah. that team right. back in the day. Right. But right. when Navarro wasn't there, yeah. we wasn't as tough, you know. Yeah. I mean, but those kids were they were they were very good, but. But these kids came from something different. Right, yeah. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't picking no kids up in no nice homes. Man. Right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I had to go around around Minnesota Avenue and going yeah. into the oil over there, dirt, yeah. and them hiding in the stall, don't want to go to practice. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> they was different, man, right, you know. Right. So, um, you know, not only did they win a lot of games, but mm. they would win any fight, too. Right, yeah. You know, yeah. and it, it was hard to handle, too, man. And, 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 and you said the name Navarro ended up playing linebacker for the 49ers. They say, man, y'all have to drop Navarro on some top-tier NBA showing up dudes, man, man look, on that road. Look, man, we walk in that gym, man. We playing against the O.J. Mayos. Man, Navarro, you got him. Navarro will follow him to the bathroom, <laughs> go to the huddle. I'd be like, come on over here, man. Well, yeah. He had they huddle, like Josh Crittenden. I mean, anybody that, that that came out on that court, man. Right. Navarro, they heart was in his in his pocket, man, by like third, fourth time trip up the, up the uh, court, man. And Slim was playing linebacker. So he they play yeah. live. We ain't even let him practice with us no more. We was running the same stuff when he was young. So we told him, focus on football. You handle that. We'll do this. And when you want to go on a trip, you're more than welcome. But and Nolan then, was happy when he did go on a trip. And Coach, I want to go. And y'all and y'all just dropped one nigga like, Mayo had a big name coming out, man. Yeah. Yeah. And he ain't seen none of that. Nah, nah. We had, man, we, them, them kids, man, like I said, they, Navarro, man, we knew football was his sport, though. Right. Because when we right. go to see him play over there at Suitland, you know, he was, he was, Dominating, man. Yeah, I was going to see him play too. He run that joint and he was yeah. licking you on the defense end, then yes. running over you yeah. on the offense end, right? Yeah, Charlie was special, man. Yeah, man, yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. Get out here because I want to. I remember Melvin come one day and say, Man, meet Charlie. I met one of them little back rows on, on, off of, um, um, what's the back row? Marlboro Pike. Uh -huh. He come out with the car, give him a couple of dollars, some uh -huh. clothes, right? I said, Dad, Charlie, like he live in Southeast. He ain't, he, he ain't like he was, he ain't like he was out there. What's yeah, that, and right? he, and, 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 and also that's a, a a blessing of him right. because he he chose the right crowd, man. Right. And right. He had a great father and mother, right. man. And Charlie didn't get into much of anything. And right. going to suit and all his friends right. over there, he could have easily went the wrong way, man. Right. But again, you know, he did the right way. Nick Lynch was rest in peace. Nick was the coach over at Suitland. Okay. Nicky, Nicky mentored uh, Navarro. And he had some good guys in his corner. Melvin, right. we all was in his right. corner, man, right. mentoring him. And he never turned left, man, which was so thankful. Right. And speaking of the toughness, like, you had a lot. We know you had a lot of talent come out there. But just go in any error and name me a five, uh, just a five all tough man team, and you can put him in any position. Just give me five dudes. And I know Navarro would make one of those. Navarro, uh, Val Brown. Yeah, okay. uh, I got one. I had uh, one. Okay. We had a kid named Dominique Sutton. I bought him from North Carolina. He played with Nolan now. 
but he okay. went to Kansas State too. Okay. So uh, guys like Navarro, mm -hmm. uh, Val Brown, mm -hmm. um, actually Sheik. Sheik? Yes, Sheik okay. Harrison was that too. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Kotcher okay. out of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would, I mean, I would, I, I would have to put the kid Dominique Sutton in there. Okay, I, I was, I was thinking you would say, what about Dirk Payne? I thought he would make it. Would he yeah. make it, or he was a bucket? Well, more? Dirk, Dirk was a, um, Dirk was a high energy guy. Mm -hmm. um, Dirk wasn't going to lock guys up like mm -hmm. these guys. You know, I mean, I would, I would, I would probably. You know, if if I didn't take Dominique Sutton, I probably would have to take Cliff Hawkins. Okay. You know, Cliff was yeah. really good. Cliff yeah. may all met in Tim Gray. Oh yeah. First team. Do Cliff did rest in peace? No. Not, not, not that. Cliff Hawkins played at Kentucky. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm thinking about. Went to Potomac out in right. Virginia. Right. Who I'm, I'm thinking about? What's Cliff? Cliff. Like? Yeah. Cliff, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, man. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Cliff yeah. Hawkins, right? You right? He was the yeah. he can boogie. Yeah. He can boogie. Out the park, niggas know me. Curb on, little homie. All days, all days. Been a road, been a road. Yeah. Thank you for watching Changing Jewels on Kirkbone TV. If you like the jewels that we are dropping, subscribe, hit the notification, and share with some friends. And I'll see you on the next episode of Changing Jewels, Kirkbone TV.